Welcome back, everybody, to episode 109 of A Scare Plays Front Office Football 8. So before we jump into the new season, I just want to show you guys kind of my thoughts during this off season here, and uh, then we'll go ahead and get started. So this year was an up year for us. We made it into the second round of the playoffs, and we did that with basically a, a very young front line. Uh, we still have our young quarterback who's still developing. We have our defense that has been kind of star studded this entire time. So let me show you guys one thing that I was looking at here. So in here, if we look at our kicking game, our kicker kicked 50 field goals last year. He made 47 of them. That was basically 10 more than the next top team in the league. Um, and he only missed three field goals out of 50, and he was perfect for point after attempts. So that kicker that we got in the final round of the first episode together, I know a lot of people are against drafting kickers, but holy cow, has he worked out for us. Um, if we go to our rushing game, let me show you guys something here. So if we sort by averages, we were one, two, three. We're the fourth worst in the league. Um, so we know that our running game, it popped off, I think it was two seasons ago. But overall, our running game has been atrocious. So we need to figure out something to boost this. If we look back here at our team here, there are a couple things that... I think we should kind of focus on here. One, our running back situation uh, is still an area of concern. Our one running back that was our main starter last year, he's actually retiring, or not retiring, but he's going to free agency this year. So we'll see uh, what we can get in terms of running back. We need to figure out some other weapon for our quarterback. Now, the quarterback, I'm still very happy with him, but throughout his three seasons with us so far, he still has really not popped off to be like a, a great passing touchdown guy. Um, he's actually in the three seasons only had six games where he passed for over 300 yards. He does get some rushing yards for us, which is nice, but um, what we really need to see this touchdown go up. Now, the flip side to this is he also throws very little interceptions. Uh, based on what we're seeing so far, I almost view him as like a Tyrod Taylor kind of quarterback where he's like extremely safe with the ball, um, which in some ways has its very big pros, but we definitely need to start putting up more points. So I think getting him a target now if we get like a top running back, that could service as uh, his other target because we do have Chuck who is going to be with our team again this season. We also still have our tight end that we drafted. I think it was our second year together. And this guy's just been extremely consistent. He always gets us somewhere around 600 yards, somewhere around five touchdowns a season. So I'm again, very happy with him. Um, something that we need to worry about though, this is going to be the first season in two seasons now that we should have a first round pick. I, I think I'm going to focus on a weapon, um, for our offense, but at this point, all of the stars on our defense. So basically anybody that is like 60 or above, they are starting to get up in age now. Um, so I, if not this season, next season, we need to draft some kind of rookie star for our defense, just that we have that kind of young blood coming through and we'll be there when these guys retire. Um, so with that, let's hop into our new season here and go ahead and get started. Roster strength, we had a 100 last season. That's pretty cool. Those numbers actually all have gone up over our years together, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and just 
sign him. We'll swap him if there's somebody better. In terms of coaching, I don't see us changing. Even though there is the guy that's technically rated higher, uh, just as a reminder, our head coach is the guy that was our defensive coordinator since the beginning of this. So I think it's important to keep him with the team, keep that unity going. Offensive coordinator is still ranked top, so roll with that. Defensive is still the top, roll with that. Um, assistant coach is still in the top three. So in terms of, again, I don't know if unity and keeping your coaching staff intact really impacts this game or not, but uh, I always view it as like a, it's probably better to keep things cohesive, especially after we had a good season. So I am going to go ahead and skip that there. And we have the top strength. All right, perfecto. Let's go take a quick look at anybody that we should possibly cut. Now, out of all of our seasons, we're starting with a very low cap this year, um, which means we're probably not going to be able to do too much in free agency. One thing that we do probably want to cut here, I don't remember their names, but we are paying two wide receivers, both about 20 million this year. And uh, Chuck, I think, did decently for us. Let me take a look here. So he went for 500 yards both seasons with us. And Carson Graham went for 700 yards both years with us. Now, right now, I can't, I don't think that I can see free agency before. And I actually can see it in here. Hmm, so there are a couple of other wide receivers that look like they're going to hit the market, as long as I'm reading this properly. Um, I've never actually looked at it like this, but looking at this, I can see like this Luther Minich guy. It looks like he's going to be hitting free agency. He's going to be asking for $34 million a year, though. Um, simply put, I I'm torn on what to do here. I don't think either of these wide receivers are pulling their weight right now, but I don't know if it's worth cutting both of them. Um, if we look here, we should definitely cut the guy that's not even a high-ranking guy anymore, which is Carson, who's technically the guy that actually has done better for us. But um, at this point, he's definitely getting overpaid. For somebody that's getting paid, let me see here, he's gonna be 24 million this year. And if we look at, let's see here at franchise, or not franchise, always click the wrong one there. Um, I'm looking for franchise player salaries. Yeah, so we're paying him like a top 20 wide receiver, which if you're getting 700 yards, you're really not that. Um, I think I'm definitely going to be cutting him. The other thing here is I'm not sure how much we're actually going to save by cutting him. Let's see what it says. If you release this player, you'll save $19 million, uh, And next year... So basically, we're going to still pay him four million this year and four million next year, but that is not that bad. Um, yeah, for what we're paying him, I'm cutting him. All right, we're going to keep Chuck uh, just because I, I think it's going to be better for us to keep a little bit of consistency here, and I think he's actually only on one year now. Yeah, he's he's on his final year of contract. We are paying him thirty million, which puts him at about like a top ten receiver, which he's definitely not putting up those numbers. Mm. Let's review that here in a second. Let me look at who else we need to possibly cut. This guy needs to be cut. 
He's not even probably going to start in the league anymore. Um, did you do Everett Parker? This is the guy that we drafted together, and it looks like his career has kind of fallen off. Man, he's a fullback, so he's not getting paid much anyway. Yeah, he's getting paid next to nothing, so we'll keep him on for now. Um, Juan Reed, this is the guy uh, running back that we brought in. He did not have a good year, uh, but we have him already. So once again, if nothing else, we'll fall back onto him. Um, nose tackle. We're not paying him that much. We'll keep him. Okay. I think we're at the point now where the only thing that we really need to question at this point is what the hell to do with Chuck. I don't even know what to really think of this. Um, if we cut him, we can possibly pull in a better receiver. But receivers are so expensive, and we're already paying our quarterback so much. Mm. I'm going to keep him on the team for now. Um, we have a couple of players that we're definitely going to need to sign and increase. Our free agency is probably going to be relatively short this year because I don't think there's really much that we're going to be able to do. Let's see. The other thing that I wasn't thinking is Chuck might be willing to restructure his deal. Um, so see our kicker's up, definitely going to negotiate him. Uh, he's looking to become like a top three kicker, which he definitely is. So we'll go ahead, get him on for four years. Um, really quick, I didn't even look. Did anybody retire this year? Looking at the list, I don't notice anybody that's gone. But let's see, quick look sees. It's action log. We did lose a, a tackle, but he came in mid-season last year, so not worried about that. All right. Um, I will try to sign this center just as a backup and, you know, come in every couple of downs to give Aiden Chandler a break. Just a quick reminder, Aiden Chandler was the center that we got last season, and we got him in the third round, and... It looks like he's going to be popping off to be an incredible player. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed on that one. Let's see. Here's a middle linebacker who, despite his higher possible rating, didn't play at all last year. But we'll go ahead and sign him because our coaching staff thinks he's going to be good. All right. Uh, we'll re-sign our long snapper. See what our player distribution looks like. Okay, so yeah, we definitely need to focus on our offense here. The other thing that I was looking at, and I'm not 100% sure why. Um, if you guys remember right, I'm pretty sure it was this guy, Dwight Turney. This is the guy that, if we look at his scouting in the past, he had a future of always like up to 75. He had a current up in the 70s as well. Uh, last year at the beginning of training camp, or I guess end of training camp, he was rated at a 75. And then I don't know what happened because he didn't get injured or anything. For some reason, by the time that the season started, basically, he dropped from a 75 to a 48. Um, so again, I'm not 100% sure what happened, but uh, that is a drop that we need to keep in mind because even though we nailed the center and guard last draft. We now really don't have a star tackle anymore, apparently. Um, so yeah, let's look here though. Our boy Jermaine is up again. He's going for pretty cheap. He's not even a top 20. 
I'm actually happy. Jermaine, I think he'll probably retire with us. Um, and as a reminder, he's been that star defensive end that's been with us basically our entire uh, time. Let's see if Chuck's willing to negotiate his salary. Um, so wait, wide receiver for a top 20, 25 million. Yeah, so he's definitely willing to take a pay cut here. Now, like I said, he's had two really bad years for us. Um, based on his ratings, it, it is an enticing offer here. It would also save us about six million this year. Hmm. And he's not even going to be a top twenty paid on this new contract. All right, we're, we're doing it. Um, let's see. Young defensive end. Hasn't really even played because our defensive ends are so good. Uh, we should probably negotiate him if he's willing to. He is. Perfect. Uh, that's the center. We're good on that. Heath Bailey. Let's take a look here. He seems to put up decent numbers. He doesn't start and play all that much because, again, our our defense is just so stacked that most of these players are not getting the full playing time that you would expect them to. Um, so let's just go ahead and negotiate him up to $10 million. That's cheap for an outside linebacker. We'll take him. Cornerback, see how he's done. He went for 60 tackles, which is really good for a corner. We'll negotiate him. Again, dirt cheap for cornerback. Mo, and I have no idea how to say this last name. Um, it's the same thing with Jermaine. I don't know how to say his last names. I've just been calling him Jermaine this entire time. Aries? A Aries? I don't know. This guy, Mo, though. Um... I feel like he had a really good season. Yeah, so three seasons ago, he went for 79 tackles. He hasn't been doing as much recently, although he hasn't even been playing. And yeah, he, he basically he basically has a part-time role. Um, so he'll probably offer a cheap deal. He is. So we'll take him. Let's see. Another corner. Who hasn't been doing that much, but uh, he's probably like the guy that we put in for when one of our other guys gets tired for a play or two, because Douglas Hartman and Nicholas Patino are our two starters. So yeah, he's willing to sign. We'll take him. Um, let's see. Yeah, again, considering how stacked our defense is, this guy had went for almost eighty tackles last year. So let's negotiate him. And we have a guard down here who will probably be replaced by Brant Fetter Fenderson next year. And we have two other ones up here. Okay, yeah, we're good there. All right. So we have enough money to probably splurge on one. Um player in free agency, like a good player. Let's sort by grade. So there's really no actually like superstar that's hitting the uh, free agency market this year. We should probably re-sign Middleton as our backup quarterback. Um, here, we'll go ahead and end the first stage since that's us re-signing. All right, let's see. So for stage two, we just re-signed the linebacker, so I don't think that that's going to be worth it. We have a stacked cornerback situation right now. We could pull in a tackle. Uh, this guy, it, it would be an upgrade to what we have. He didn't allow any sacks last year, but he also only played five games. Um, what's he asking for? 
Why did he only play five games? Hold up. Did he get injured? Ooh, this guy has a long injury history. Not interested. All right. We're not going for anything in round one. Or round two, I guess that was. Let's take a look-see here. So here's a running back that had three ridiculous seasons and he had a down season last year. He didn't get like an ACL or something, did he? No, he's had four small injuries. Let's take a quick look at the draft. And what draft pick do we have? We only have 27th, which means it's going to be a little bit of a crapshoot in terms of who we're going to be able to get. With that, I say we use our free agency money to try to get that running back. He's actually a younger running back, so I don't mind trying to splurge on him here. Pedro Garber. I think that's how you would say that. And look, he's only asking to be paid like a top 20. I have a feeling this could be a bidding war with another team. So we're definitely going to have to offer him more than this. Uh, let's see. So maybe make him like a top five paid. So we'll offer him 15 the first year. 18. 21. 24. Yeah, so that would, uh, no, it's still going to be, I just don't want to get outbid here. We're going to up these each by 1 million. That would put him at like a top 5 paid, although by then he'll probably be like a top 10. Um, 102 million for 4 years. So if he takes it. Okay, we, we got him. Perfect. So that also will give our quarterback a little bit of a uh, option here. He's not that good at route running, but he's good at third down catching, getting downfield, and avoiding drops. So this guy combined with uh, the guy that we got last year, who's the older guy. I forget his name now. So Pedro combined with, oh, let's say we re-signed Ben Blades. I guess our coaching staff did that. I missed that. I was thinking of Juan Reed. Uh, this guy is probably going to be our other uh, main back. Although, I don't know. We might have a little bit of a three-headed field here. Needless to say, it's still an upgrade. Um, we also really quickly want to get um, Middleton, if nothing else, he's going to be like our career backup, it looks like. So we'll make sure that he gets paid enough to stick with us. Okay, sweet. He's stuck with us. Now we really don't want to spend that much because we need quite a bit for our rookies. So let's go ahead and do the draft here. And let's see. I think we should focus on a wide receiver. If we can get our young quarterback a good wide receiver, that will really help us out. Where's this guy rank in there's no way that that guy lasts until pick 27. Um, we'll still interview him just in case he does, but I highly doubt he does. And I feel like with a young quarterback, getting somebody that's going to drop the ball a lot, like this guy is, is not going to be a good combo. I feel like we need somebody that has solid hands. Like this guy, even though some of his other bars are lower, he should at least become a reliable target when the ball's thrown towards him. 
Um, hmm. Actually, I just noticed. I didn't notice it before I interviewed him. That guy has a five strength, which is horrendous. I think that that means that he can get injured easily. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm actually not a fan of anybody that we've looked at so far, besides Ruben, but there's no way Ruben lasts until our pick. Very overrated. Blue him. These guys have really low strength. Then we instantly get to like Neville down here. Hmm. Well, I don't think there's any chance of Ruben falling to us, and I'm not a huge fan of these other options. This guy is decent, but his route running and third down catching are terrible. This guy has high bars, but I'm worried about that drop situation. This might be our best option. He's considered overrated, though. Ugh. I don't feel good going this guy with our first round pick. Um, there's a number of tackles. We could go ahead and upgrade our line like somebody like orlando down here would probably still be available considered overrated though hmm. is this where maybe we pull in our future tight end i don't know how long tight ends generally last Tackle is interesting, it's considered underrated. Hmm. The other odd thing, I don't see a single safety anywhere near the top of this list. Here are some. All right, so I don't like the look of Bill per se. Wow. Really interesting here. I really I really don't see a player that I'm a big fan of at this pick. There's a ton of defensive tackles. Uh, what's our defensive tackle game looking like? So we have a couple that are definitely decent, but we don't have like a star. Maybe this could be a draft where we get a new defensive tackle for the future. Somebody like this will probably still be there since there's already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I doubt seven defensive tackles are gonna go in the first round. So we could potentially go for somebody like this. Considered overrated though. Hmm. Wow. And I'm kind of like a broken record here, but I I don't see a player that I'm loving. Um Yeah, with the super high drops. Let's interview this guy. Yeah, that drop situation is 
I'm still going to mark him, but I'm scared of his drops. Um, I think that tackle right here might be our best option. Uh, I think that he'll definitely still be there. I know that's not a flashy pick and not what I was originally planning for. Um, this free safety may be worthwhile. Again, though, for a top top round pick, I, uh, I have my reservations there. There's a decent corner, but we don't really need a corner. This is actually interesting. This is a, how do, he's already 44% developed though. See, now this could be my wrong thinking. When I see a quarterback with stats like this and they're like low developed, I'm like, okay, maybe they can grow a lot. This guy's already like fit basically halfway developed which means I don't think these bars are going to move as much. Um, and we don't really need a third string quarterback. Um, if we get to the point where we need a third string quarterback, hopefully we just tank that season. <laughs> um, there's a good fullback. We could pull in a new fullback since our other guys kind of aging out. Um, but again, that's not going to be something I'm going to use a first round pick on. I interviewed him anyway, because if he lasts to pick like round three or something like that, maybe. That's a pretty decent looking middle linebacker. What's our linebacker situation? Um, so for middles... We have one guy that's really good, uh, Johnny McClay, but he's also nine years in the league, so not sure how long he'll be sticking around. And we have two that are in the 50s, or that should be in the 50s, which makes it a hard guess here because, I mean, just looking at this guy's stats or scouting here, it looks like he should get better than a 50. He also didn't work out though, which makes him more of a wild card. Wow, I actually really hate this draft. I was really pumped because it was our first time in like three episodes we have a first round pick. But this guy's, again, his drops don't look good, but let's interview him. Very overrated. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling this draft. All right, well, let's see what we got. Let's see if there's anybody else, these later stages. Two wide receivers here, but I feel like we might as well just go with a rookie at this point. Uh, we have the one guy, Chuck. Yeah, with how limited our cap space is, I'm going to go ahead and head into the draft. Just trying to think what is going to be the best option here. All right. Let's do this draft. Do it on faster for the first couple, as always. Wide receiver. Ooh, two wide receivers. First two off the board. And then actually Ruben, the guy that I was saying there's no way he lasts until 27. He actually went at five. So, uh, yeah. So, 
three wide receivers in the top six pick or no in the top five picks this year. That's crazy. Switching up to fastest and we'll see what's left. Now believe it or not, I was 100% not expecting this guy to still be here. There is a defensive tackle that fits into the nose tackle scheme, which is what we run. We didn't interview this guy, but I would need to watch the video back at this point. I'm pretty sure this guy was like a top 10 player. Um, so the fact that he lasted this long makes him very enticing. Um, we have this right tackle down here that we were excited about. There's probably zero chance that he lasts until our next pick, just to make sure. Yeah, we don't have another pick for 32 picks, basically. So, um, man, I almost feel like that, that nose tackle being available still. I was not expecting him to still be there. What that could also mean is it could also mean that a bunch of teams interviewed him and weren't happy with him. But he is by far the top player on the board. So I am going to go ahead and select him. All right. Is any player that we marked red still on here? Miles Webb is, but he's relatively far down the list. Actually, if we sort by grade, he's actually not that far down. It's funny, I was really expecting to be working on our offense this draft, but nothing here is really looking too good for us. Yeah, so none of the wide receivers that we've marked are even available still. All right. Um, I think the next best thing is going to be selecting the safety that we may be reaching for him here, but I think he's going to be best option for us. I'm just, I'm, I know you guys can't see me, but I'm shaking my head right now. I really am not feeling this draft at all. Um, there is a defensive end that probably, uh, he's definitely the next on the board. Um, This Casey Burnett guy is actually not that bad looking. But again, we don't really need a... Although he's also 1% developed. So he is a guy that we could throw on our bench for probably three or four seasons. Let's do that, actually. If nothing else, he could become a trade asset for us if he's looking like he's developing well. Um... What positions do we actually need to fill still? So we still need punter, tackle, wide receiver, tight end. Do we just take top remaining wide receiver? This guy has really good route running. Can we compare these guys side by side? We can. So yeah, I definitely think Dylan Fields is probably the better option here. They have their pros and cons. Junior Devlin also is a bigger guy. Um, I like this guy's route running though. So we're going to go Dylan Fields here. At this point, I think we're going to just need to 
probably grab the top wide receivers that go through the draft because none of these guys look really worth drafting. Um, let's see about tackles. That guy looks decent for how late in the draft we are, at least. That guy looks decent. Something I got to keep in mind, though. Whoever I pick here is probably going to be starting this year, which is not ideal. But the fact that they're probably going to be starting means I need to probably take the player that has a higher development number. That guy's a very interesting late round pick. And in that case, that's going to be Herman Young at 33%. This guy's at 53, but his bars don't look good at all. This guy at least has a little bit better bars. So we'll go ahead and take this tackle. Hopefully Ronald lasts until round seven. This guy has ridiculous strength. And if we look here, he looks like he's really good at pass blocking. So go ahead and select him. We have our tight end who's a good receiver. So not too worried about that. And then we'll go ahead and grab Ronald here. All right. Let's see how those rookies are rating for us. Okay, so the defensive tackle we ended up picking, our staff is saying he's going to become a 77 right now, which is awesome. Uh, that could be that young defensive player that I was hoping to nab. I originally thought we would get him next year, but uh, he kind of fell into our laps here. That quarterback, Casey Burnett, is currently rated to go to a 51, which that could be awesome for us. And then none of these other guys really looks like, look like they're going to pan out, at least right now. Other thing that I think is the first time we've seen it, uh, you see this little exclamation point next to Victor. That means that he's going to be holding out on us. So basically, he's not going to play unless we extend his contract. So normally when they do this, they're also looking to get paid quite a bit. So this guy's looking to get paid outside linebacker. He's actually only looking to get paid to about a top 20. But if we look here, he's already listed as a 51 overall. He's going to be 30 this season. So we're signing him into like his mid 30s, which means these numbers are probably going to taper off. So if he's refusing to play, we're releasing him. Unfortunate, but I don't want to sign that guy onto a four year deal. So let's see. We still need at least one wide receiver, a punter, probably two outside linebackers. So let's see what we got here. Rookie punter. Let's make sure we get this guy. There's a tackle. It's interesting that, what year was this guy drafted? He was drafted. It's interesting that he's, well, actually, yeah, he was almost allowing one sack every other game, which isn't too good. Um, but you know what? With how weak our tackle situation is going into this season, we'll go ahead and give him a shot young corner that might have slipped through the draft. And I have to be careful with how many of these I do because we actually do have positions that we need filling on. Um, let's see here. So we know that we need outside linebacker. This is the guy that we just cut, though. He's coming off of some major injury, so skip on him.
young guy that we might need to throw in. There's another young guy. Oops, not too many zeros there. Where is the next wide receiver on this list? Here he is, Trevor Wisher. Wisher? No, I don't know. Like I said, I'm terrible with names, so. <laughs> Uh, we'll go ahead and give this guy an offer, but he really doesn't look like he's going to amount to much. I guess he's going to be a distraction, so we'll skip him. It's a good thing I didn't cut both of our wide receivers because, all in all, it's not looking too pretty in terms of our options. Um, we need to find another... Outside linebacker. Gave an offer to a punter. All right, let's click OK through one or two rounds here. All right, so we got the wide receiver, we got the punter, and we got an outside linebacker. which those should fill in what we actually absolutely needed. We did get the other outside. I should be signed two additional outside. Perfect. And then hopefully we still get this tackle and this cornerback. And our cap space is definitely low. Okay, we got them. But you can see here we're now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're eighth lowest in cap space. So let's just take one look one more time at free agents. There's another outside linebacker that's here. Go ahead and offer him something. There's another nose tackle. That's interesting. I'm trying to think. I feel like I didn't see these guys in this list before. Did teams draft? No, he went undrafted. I wonder if players get re-numbered here at some point in free agency. Doesn't look like it. That's weird. Maybe I just did overlook these guys, but I feel like I didn't. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, all right, we got ourselves them. We could use another defensive end. We only have three right now. Uh, we could use another wide receiver or tight end. We'll go ahead and offer to this young guy. I still don't see any wide receiver listed here. Here's a tight end, but his receiving numbers don't look too good. At this point, I'm just kind of looking for a potential weapon for our um, quarterback. So this guy actually, I was, this guy has ridiculous numbers for pass blocking, blocking strength, avoiding drops. This guy has very good numbers there and for getting downfield and route running. So I think I'm going to offer it to this guy. All right. But at that point, we're going to be pretty darn low on money. So if we need to make a late season trade or something, we don't want to zero out our cap space. I'm really not sure how to feel going into this season. In previous seasons, I've been like, we definitely upgrade it. Like, I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> I'm not feeling that this time. All right, we'll simulate through 
preseason here. All right, we'll simulate week one. All right, we won our first game, but it looks like we're back to our old habits here. We only won 12 to 10. Um, so let's take a look here first at what our starting lineup actually is. This guy's red, which is not good. He's the new guy we brought in. He had three attempts for negative five yards, and then he pulled his calf muscle. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Um, how did Harry McGee do? Not too good. Zero touching or uh, zero touchdown passes. He also got zero interceptions, though. So, again, at least he's a safe quarterback. But, <laughs> um, interestingly enough, I'm trying to figure out why. So, the center that was popping off is not listed as our starter right now. Maybe it's because he has such high seasonal rust. Not entirely sure why he's not listed as our starter. He should be. Um, And we'll probably see that change throughout the season. Jermaine has dropped a little bit in numbers, but dude's been a monster for us. And we have these other guys coming in to fill in. Yeah, that new nose tackle is still rated at 72, so he'll probably take over starting at some point here. And then Watanabe has a knee tendonitis, which I'm not even 100% sure. Watanabe will maintain a high level of performance. Okay, so I guess he'll be back in in a couple of weeks. Hmm. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll run to week four. That will give us a better idea of how our stats are actually looking. We're one and one. We're one and two. We're not putting up any scoring. I don't think we've had a single game scoring over 12 points. Um, all right, let's take a look here at our team summary. Okay. So our defense is still looking decent, although not great. Our offense is struggling to all hell. Um, wow. And like McGee's passing numbers are just not increasing. So far, the most we've scored a single week is 14. Our running game is struggling. All right, let's see if the... Okay, so Pedro should come back. If not the upcoming game, it should be the next one. So that will hopefully give our running and passing game a bit of a boost. Um, where's Watanabe? Watanabe's back in. Okay. Our young center did end up stepping in to start. And now I'm, uh, it becomes so hard to judge. I think once we get our running back, uh, Pedro back in here, we'll have a better idea. I feel like our offensive line should be good enough just looking at numbers here hmm all right let's run to trade deadline and see what happens we lost again we only put up 14. we lost again we lost again okay 
we're at one in six. I don't think it's even worth doing any kind of trading this season. At this point, whatever is happening, it does not look like we have any shot at making playoffs here. Throughout seven games, McGee has put up four touchdowns. A running game has picked up a little bit, but it's still terrible. Watanabe has 14 catches to five drops. Another terrible number. Our defense is still holding strong, but when your offense can't put up even freaking double digits. Hmm. Well, I said this in an earlier season. I'm not intentionally tanking the team, so I know some people at this point would be like, all right, I'm screwed. I'm benching my quarterback, whatever. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm still going to you know, try to get the best record we can. I'm not going to take over that those uh, roles from my coaching staff. So um, we'll see how the rest of the season pans out for us. And those are we might have a lot to consider going into next season. There we put up 28 for the first time. There we've won two in a row. We've won three in a row. Won four in a row. <laughs> what is happening? We're going from one and six to six and six. Um, okay. Let's pause for a second. And let's, uh, So interesting. It looks like we benched McGee. That's what it looks like. He didn't get hurt, did he? Nope. So we benched him for Middleton. And Middleton has come in and not done outstanding, but he's done better than McGee was doing. Okay. Um... It looks like we're going to have a 1,000 yard wide receiver in Asher Doyle. Which, this is actually going to be, it looks like, his best season, which is very interesting. Wow. Uh, I'm just kind of wrapping my head, just. <laughs> The fact that McGee is now benched, that puts a dagger in what I was hoping we were going to be seeing here. McGee was hopefully our you know, franchise guy, and it looks like he might have fallen to the wayside. It, almost like a golf situation where he uh, you know, had a couple of decent years when he was young, and then just, it's not looking good for him. Let's play out the rest of this and see what happens. Are we lost? All right, now we're on a losing streak again. We're at six and eight. We actually had a tie. And we finished seven, eight, and one which I'm assuming didn't make playoffs. We will confirm here in a couple of seconds though. Yeah, we didn't make playoffs. All right. So we'll go ahead and sim through playoffs here, see who takes it. Uh, here we're at the conference final. It's Arizona v. Minnesota, Denver v. Buffalo. Right, Buffalo v. Minnesota. Minnesota takes it, 2077. All right, let's go ahead and save. And look at 
what happened here. Um, I'm probably going to definitely need to look at some numbers off recording here. Try to figure out what happened. All of our offensive lines numbers went down drastically. Um, did Harry McGee end up starting again? Take a look here. He did end up taking starting role again, but he never did any better. Um, wow. This is going to be a very interesting thing that we're going to have to deal with next episode. I'm just kind of speechless. I don't even know really even what to say about this. I mean, is it the fault that we don't have a star wide out for him? It could be. But with what he's surrounded by, he should be able to put up better numbers than that. Um, you know, if we look at Middleton here, he only played two games for us, but he put up a 300-yard game, which I don't think Harry McGee did all season. I know he put up one. Ugh, man. Well... We definitely had a down year this year. We're going to have to figure out this quarterback situation, which is not something I was hoping to have to say. I think getting him a better receiving player is going to be beneficial, but I don't know if that pulls him up from how bad this has been. I mean, admittedly, both of his past two years have been pretty bad. Um, and then we're going to have to keep an eye. Uh, Jermaine, he could be retiring in our next season. Man, trading away those first round picks for Harry McGee in the end here may not have been worth it. Um, we're, we're going to have to look into this. Before we close up, let's take a quick look at our... What am I looking for? I am looking for the season awards. There we are. One of our outside linebackers, only one of our outside linebackers made Pro Bowl. He went for 93 tackles and seven and a half sacks. So, heck yeah. Um, what was this guy? Was this guy... I need to keep an eye on this guy. Emmanuel Brandon. Because it looks like he's definitely somebody that we should stick around for our team. Man. All right, well, uh, you know, if you guys have any input for this, please feel free to comment because I'm definitely, uh, th this year just did not go according to plan. We'll just put it that way. Um, I, I think we're at a crossroads with McGee. I, I think, in my opinion, we have to give him one more year. Um, but then if he has another bad year, we're going to have a problem offloading him. So there's another thing to keep in mind. I don't know if starting Middleton is going to be worth it. Uh, man. All right. Well, I will see you guys for the next episode. Please feel free to comment with any input you guys have. Looking at the stats here, what could we do better? What did we mess up on? And uh, until next episode, I'll see you guys then. Ace Care out.